Is every chain of blocks a blockchain? What is the fundamental difference between private and public networks? Hi, my name is Alexey Konosevich and let's talk about blockchain. Some people think that permission distributed ledger technology can perform better than open permissionless blockchain because it is tweaked to address the issues of the letter. Such systems are called permissioned blockchain as if blockchain a high-level concept and permissioned is one of its variants. But it's wrong. And you will come to understand why. Is permissioned decentralized? There are many options to choose from the distributed ledger technologies. Permissioned, private, enterprise, federated, DLT and so on. And frankly, sometimes it's not easy to distinguish them. Therefore, for this level of discussion, let's compare just DLT versus blockchain. In the next videos, I will delineate their specifics. So, is permission DLT centralized? A permission DLT and the mentioned variety thereof are not decentralized. And it's a fallacy to attribute the features of blockchain to permission DLT. Even though they have chains of blocks, and their ledgers, both in DLT and uh, blockchain, are distributed. But it's misconception to say that it's the same. Some DLT proponents can claim that decentralization can have a degree and permissionless blockchain is more decentralized. But let's put it simply. If there is someone between two counterparties in a transaction and they can do nothing about this, they deal with the centralized technology. In a public permissionless blockchain, if an ordinary user doesn't want to rely on a miner as an intermediary for their transaction to include in a block, such a user can create a transaction and mine himself or herself. If the block is valid, the network will accept it. Of course, mining nowadays requires a lot of computational resources, but there are no technical or formal barriers to it. You don't need to seek permission from anyone to mine. That's the fundamental difference of a decentralized technology. So, distinguishing feature of the blockchain is its open and competitive nature of the consensus protocol. All parties or all members of the network are equal. No authority decides whose truth is better and this competition relies only on the code. In DLT, users of the network have different roles and authority and ordinary users are not able to create and validate blocks. Permission DLTs can be decentralized only from one perspective in a network that unites independent members, organizations, companies, but it can be decentralized only for these members. It will always be centralized for all those outside of this consortium. Of course, if this network is meant to work for outside users. Is a DLT cartel? A consortium, a private or permission DLT can be considered a cartel. Sooner or later an antitrust body may question this because we have a situation when some market players united in the network and restricted access to other players on the market. They coordinated and keep coordinating their actions. So the antitrust body eventually can ask whether it influences the prices on their market and the quality of the services and products they provide, and how it affects the competition. Thus, a consortium DLT should carefully develop their terms and conditions. A completely centralized system solely controlled by one entity is much safer. But a centralized system will never achieve the same level of reliability and credibility that the blockchain can. It will be vulnerable as any other centralized system is, and here is why. A centralized DLT is not immutable. An organization or organizations that control such a ledger can rewrite it. 
the ledger can be rewritten as a result of a cyber attack, but blockchain, due to its open and competitive nature, because of mining and staking and whatever they have, can achieve immutability and hence its records will be safe and credible. Thousands of independent nodes can ensure unprecedented level of resistance to any sort of attack. And we have a lot of ledgers like that. Bitcoin, Ethereum, that has never been compromised. How to correct a mistake on the ledger? Usually it comes the next after the discussion about immutability, how to correct a mistake. What if you need to change a transaction or your smart contract? What if you lost your private key? There is nothing you can do retroactively. Alteration in the blockchain is impossible. In this regard, the DLT is usually offered as a better alternative to blockchain. You will hear that DLTs can be designed so that those who control the network verify transactions on entry and therefore non-compliant transactions will not be allowed to pass through. But it would be a fallacy to think that censorship in the network will ultimately exclude all mistakes and unwanted transactions. There will be always a chance for a mistake. And then what? A retroactive change as a last resort? But if you can alter history, you undermine the whole idea of the blockchain. No other technology can ensure such a level of immutability of data. It's not just one of the blockchain features. This is its superior advantage. Nevertheless, immutability is perceived as something that impedes its legal application. Say your circumstances change and you need to alter the smart contract. The answer to this is that we don't change transactions retroactively on the blockchain or anywhere else. We legitimize changes through amendments. And this simple principle must be properly applied in blockchain applications. Instead of trying to rewrite something retroactively, the properly designed application must be able to accommodate changes by publishing a new transaction that reflects a change from the previous one. This is the key answer to all legal complications, death of a token owner, a dispute or loss of private keys. And here comes into play the advantage of the blockchain, because it is immutable. The blocks preserve their chronological order. Therefore, you can have an application with subsequent transactions, and the latest one always represents the current state of affairs. If you want to protect your record for good, what would you choose? An append-only storage where nobody can change anything or a system controlled by a bunch of parties that can change the ledger at their will or be hacked. The blockchain is a public repository of evidence for everything that happened. Permission DLT cannot become such a repository. There are different methods of designing legal applications and I have been working on them in academia since 2016. If you want to know more about it, you can start this journey with this video. I know many people say permissions or private blockchain. However, it's not correct. Why blockchain system cannot be permissioned, you can find in my academic paper. Find the link to it in the description. But in a nutshell, not every chain of blocks is a blockchain. Connecting timestamped chunks of data with hashes was invented by Heber and Sternata in 1991. But nobody has ever called it blockchain because blockchain is more than just a chain of blocks. The blockchain is about how these blocks are created and validated. With blockchain, blocks are created as a result of an open, decentralized and uncensored competition. This is the definition of the blockchain and this is what Satoshi Nakamoto presented to the world in 2008. Hence, anything that is centralized, permissioned or private 
is whatever, but not the blockchain. Unfortunately, anyone is free to attribute the word blockchain to any technology they want, as the legal owner of this word didn't reveal him or herself and didn't exercise the copyright to protect against its misuse. DLT proponents tried hard to erase the boundary between these concepts. But it's only a matter of time until a high-profile knockdown hacks of private DLTs show the real difference between DLT and blockchain and dramatically change the situation. There is a big difference between a handful of known nodes in the DLT network that might be an easy target, or thousands of anonymous nodes worldwide in the blockchain network. We can argue about this theoretically, but when it comes to losing money due to vulnerabilities in the system, nobody will listen to enthusiastic speeches about DLT. People will start asking questions. If you use private permissions, you should be ready for this. As to terminology, the distributed ledger technology DLT is the correct way to call all non-blockchain class of distributed ledgers. In conclusion, I would like to say that DLT is not a bad technology, don't get me wrong. It has merits and there are situations when this technology is useful. My biggest concern is that improper use of the word blockchain mislead people as it attributes the features that the permission DLT doesn't have. I don't want people in business to mislead their investors and customers. I don't want politicians and the bureaucrats to lie to people about blockchain projects they want to bring to society. In future videos, I will return to DLT technologies and discuss cases when it makes sense. Stay tuned and hit that button. See you in the next video. Thank you. In the next videos I will delineate. In the next videos I will delineate. 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 Delineate.